and welcome to Doctor Strange the Lesser, where we get you in and out as fast as possible. Oh, wait, no. James Lesser Express Lane. But Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Saw it. Three o'clock. First view that they had. I was surprised by how packed it was. It's three o'clock on a Thursday afternoon. Why are there so many people here? Honestly, they probably like me were... They work early enough, no, four to noon, five to one, six to two, that they get out, they get to go see a movie at three o'clock on a Thursday afternoon. Anyways, I have to say, the major complaints people were having is, it's a Sam Raimi film, not an MCU film. It doesn't follow the MCU formula. Great. I don't go to a Quentin Tarantino film and then bitch that it's a Quentin Tarantino film. I'm sure as hell not going to a Sam Raimi film and then bitching that it's a Sam Raimi film. Raimi makes good movies. And he does as well with this. Now, everyone's expecting a lot of cameos. And overall, technically, in my opinion, there were two. Alright, well, maybe three. Because there's a guy from the first one. All he does is sit down... Next to Doctor Strange during an event. By the way, I'm not going to do spoilers until the end. Anyways. There's an event going on. He sits down next to him. He's like, hey, Doctor Strange. Or hey, Doctor... Whatever the guy's name is. <sighs> so, I haven't seen you in a while. Well, I was dusted for five years. So that's one cameo. The other two... Ugh. The one cameo was fantastic. Probably the best cameo they had. But... Like I said, in my opinion, there's only technically three cameos. The rest that people would say is a cameo, like we all know from the commercial that Patrick Stewart's in it. But he's not a cameo. He's a character. He plays a character in the movie. A cameo is Stan Lee going up to the door after the movie's already over. I got a package for Tony Stank. That's a cameo. Patrick Stewart and the others play characters. They have lines, they have roles, they have scenes. So, in my opinion, there's really only three cameos. As for who actually appears in the movie, obviously Doctor Strange, Benedict Wong. Uh, ex it begins with an X. I cannot pronounce the woman's name that plays American Chavez. And of course, we know from the commercials, he has to pull in Wanda to help him. Now, what threat could be so dangerous that he has to pull in the Scarlet Witch for help? You got Wong. You got the Sanctum. You have Doctor Strange. And they got to pull in Wanda, the Scarlet Witch, for help? Well, it starts off with Doctor Strange with American Chavez. They're in a mystical world. There's a demon coming after them. They're trying to get to this book. They get to the book, they can defeat the demon, yay! Demon catches up. Doctor Strange is not powerful enough to contain it. If he gets killed, the demon catches American Chavez. He's like, well, the only way to keep this thing from getting your power is to kill you. What? No! And then Doctor Strange wakes up in bed. Oh god, what a weird nightmare. He's gotta go to an event. At the event, the tentacle monster thing that we saw in the Previews and all that. Attacks. He goes in. He fights it. Wong shows up as the Sorcerer Supreme. Fights it. Together, they defeat it. Yay! But then, Doctor Strange comes across American Chavez. Like, huh. You seem familiar. There's a reason why she seems familiar. She, she is American Chavez from the dream. Turns out dreams are not dreams. They're you from a multiverse. Even Wong goes... So when I'm naked running away from clowns, that's happening in a different universe. So yeah, it's you from a different universe. Like, okay, so what the hell happened? Oh, you died. What? Okay, so you're saying you can travel the multiverse freely, and then I died in one of those multiverses. Now you're here? Yes. Prove it. All right, follow me. Takes him to the dead body of his, well, of his body, which is from a different universe. Like, okay, well, I'll bury that real quick. Uh, one of your bears is like, uh, you're probably violating some codes. I buried a lot worse. Like, okay, well, what's coming after you? A very powerful demon. Well, I noticed the runes on that demon 
It wasn't raised by regular magic. It was raised by a very powerful witchcraft. Thankfully, I know a really powerful witch. The Scarlet Witch. So he goes to her and we've all seen the scene. Oh, when you break the rules, you're a hero. When I break the rules, I'm the villain. That's not unfair. Like, well, you help me. I'll get you back on lunchboxes. Well, you know what? Instead of me going to the Sanctum to help the protector, why don't you just bring American here? Like, ah. Nah, the Sanctum being mystical and all that and having all the people there. Yeah, she's powerful, but when you have her and everyone else. Anyways, shit goes sideways. We gotta travel the multiverse. And in one scene, uh, Chavez panics, creates a portal. They go, her and uh, Strange go flying through it. They go through like 20 different worlds. And like in one world, they're animated. Another world, they're paint. Another world, it's like a volcano world. Like they just go flying through all these worlds and land up in Universe 838. Like, well, we go to the other Doctor Strange here. He can help us. That's where you come across probably the best cameo in the movie. I'm going to spoil it until the end, so don't have to worry about it. And then you get the second great cameo, but we don't care about that one. They get to the Sanctum, and that's going to be a spoiler, so I can't talk about it. But then they meet this person, they meet these characters, they meet this world's version of the Avengers. There's, like, I don't want to spoil anything until the end, so you can skip it, but this is a Sam Raimi film that does not follow the MCU formula. <laughs> Sam Raimi was given a Marvel budget to make a PG-13 horror movie, and he did what he could with the limits placed by Marvel. There are some scenes like, Holy shit, this is still PG-13, right? Like, how did they get away with that? How did they get away with this? The PG-13 movie. Well, probably part of it has to do with Disney, but like, hey, MPAA board? Because it's PG-13 rating, even though this would normally be considered rated R. Just saying. Or the one scene, there's like, I wonder how many times they had to shoot this scene. Like, nope, that's too much blood. Too much blood. Yeah, that's enough. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, we'll let that through. Oh, they'll listen to it. Let's add a little bit more blood here, a little bit more blood there. Can we get away with it? Yeah, we got away with it. Okay, let's not push your luck anymore. God, I'm trying to think of a way to put it without spoiling. Other than it's a Sam Raimi film. If you like Sam Raimi films, watch it. So if you like Quentin Tarantino films, you watch those films. If you're tired of the MCU formula, if you're tired of the the quips and insulting oh we're gonna insult the villains like oh if you're able to just insult the villain like that and call him a pansy or whatever that uh, kind of downgrades the villain a little bit in my opinion well, on this they don't do that it's not a quip a minute it's not peter parker over there it's well that is strange trying to fight something bad enough and evil enough he's got to pull in a ton of help but again there's maybe three cameos in the entire film. Because the others that show up are not, in my opinion, a cameo. They're characters. They have a role. They have lines. They have scenes. Like, they're there for more than going, Ah, oh, it's that person. Ah, oh, it's Stan Lee. Ah, oh, it's uh, Patrick Stewart. Charles Xavier, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Played by Patrick Stewart, but... With that, I gotta say, again, if you're tired of the MCU formula... You want to see something that breaks that and want to help support Sam Raimi, hopefully getting more films with this kind of budget, or maybe he has a, oh, I've always wanted to do this movie, I just can't get the funding for it. Hey, Marvel, you know I made you all this money with this movie? Well, maybe kick in oh, maybe $25 million to make this movie that I've been wanting to make for a while. Just can't get the funding for it. Okay, sure. Hmm. So yeah, go see it. I'm glad I did. Maybe see it during the afternoon so it's not too packed. Oh, and another thing. People, some people anyways, got annoyed with like Endgame or Spider-Man No Way Home where, oh, it's this person. Oh, they said that. Oh, they did this. This my viewing. That didn't happen. You have a few like, oh, or oh, shit. There's no way they just did that. You have people like talking, saying stuff like that. But there's no, oh, that's Charles Xavier. Eh. So yeah, go see it. Now, on the count of three. Then we'll go to the spoilers and un, deux, trois, spoiler time. The guy from the office finally plays Reed Richards. 
people have been talking about it for a while. Like, he would make a great Reed Richards. He'd make a great Mr. Fantastic. They even did fan art and fan, like, Photoshop stuff of him as that character. Like, holy shit, he... No. Wrong guy from the office. I meant this guy. He actually appears as Reed Richards. He does a fantastic job of it. The only thing that's going to suck is that, well, since he was Reed Richards in Universe 838, he's probably not going to be Reed Richards in 616, the universe that we've been following, apparently. Like, aww. But he does a fantastic job. He was great in his role. Then you get Black Bolt. If you don't know, he's the king of... Not the Kree. He's king of some group, but... His power is... He speaks, it's immensely powerful. A whisper will blow your body up. He shouts, he'll create a hole bigger than the Grand Canyon. If he gets too loud, he might blow up the moon. Just saying. But it's him. Charles Xavier, as we already know. And, of course, Mr. Fantastic. Then you have Captain Carter instead of Captain America. And you have a Captain Marvel. But... In the Captain Marvel movie, you have Brie Larson and then you have her friend. Brie Larson becomes Captain Marvel. Well, apparently in 838, it was her friend that became Captain Marvel. They make up the Illuminati, along with their version of Doctor Strange. They defeated Thanos. How? The MacGuffin. The book that they were going after the, in the dream at the very beginning of the movie was what they used to defeat Thanos. They didn't have Tony Stark. They didn't have Captain America or Thor. They had the Illuminati. Now, issue is, their version of Doctor Strange died. There's a big statue in front of the Sanctum. No, here lies Doctor Stephen Strange, the man who defeated Thanos. May he rest in peace. But it turns out, there's not only the good guy MacGuffin, there's the bad guy MacGuffin. A evil sorcerer book that has all these evil spells and it taints and corrupts the person who uses it while well, they knew Thanos was coming so Doctor Strange was using that first to try to find a way to defeat Thanos well at one point he accidentally destroyed a whole other universe oops but then later it's like alright it's obviously corrupting him now that we've defeated Thanos we're, we gotta kill him and he was like yeah I know I fucked up. Do it. And then Black Bolt whispers, I'm sorry, and just boom! Explodes him. Like, okay. Good to know. So when they get a new Doctor Strange, they freak out. It's like, oh, we already know about multiple universes from our Doctor Strange. So we don't know if you're going to be like him. If you're going to be worse. So they got some power cuffs on him, locked up in a clear box. To stop him so they can study him to make sure that he's not going to be, you know, evil and corrupted. Now, why is he in 838? Because of 616? The person who sent the demon after Chavez? The person who's so powerful that Dr. Stephen Strange has Wong, the entire sanctum, and the Scarlet Witch to help him defend American Chavez is... The Scarlet Witch. Yeah. Scarlet Witch misses her kids. I was like, but they weren't real. No, they weren't real in 616. Now, the universes, they are. So she's trying to steal American Chavez's powers so she can travel to other dimensions and multiverses where her kids are. And I was like, well, can't she just get American Chavez? Like, all right, here's a world where your kids are. Have fun. They actually do offer that. It's like, no. Because what if in my world they get a disease? That we don't have a cure for. But if in another multiverse they have a cure for it, if I have her powers and be like, all right, open up this time space portal, step through, there's a cure, boink, there you go, kid. Yay, my kid's fine. And so she wants to kill American Chavez by sucking her power out of her. The issue, besides, you know, Scarlet Witch being an 11 out of 10 on the power scale, American Chavez can't control her powers. They activate when she gets extremely scared. That's just a little like, oh, you got a jump scare on me. Like, no, she has to be terrified for her life before they activate. 
So when like they go to 838, it's a complete accident. She doesn't know how to get them back, which is why they go to that world's version of Doctor Stephen Strange to get help. Now, the Scarlet Witch is able to chase after them. The way she chases after them is by dream walking, where she uses a spell from the evil MacGuffin to jump into her version in 838 and goes after Doctor Stephen Strange and American Chavez. Or they're currently locked up, protected by the Illuminati. And they know that she's coming, because they were warned. Don't worry, we got this. We defeated Thanos, we can, we can beat a witch. Black Bolt, again, obliterated Doctor Strange with a single whisper of, I'm sorry. He goes to use his powers on Scarlet Witch. It's like, oh, back down, or one word from him, from his mouth will kill you. What mouth? Camera cuts back to him. His mouth's gone. Mm. It's like, whoa, what the? They don't show, like, if it was rated R, they would have shown his head exploding. But he had his uh, whole mask and helmet thing on. So all you see is, like, <clears> of <throat> the mask, like, shoot out a little bit. It's like, and then he just drops over dead. It's like, oh, well, we know what happened there. And then Reed Richards, again, played by him. Pretty much looks the same, except the four is in the middle, not on the petro, uh, pec muscle. Goes, you know, I'm a father. I have kids. I know what it's like to love someone more than yourself. Is their mom still alive? Yes. And they'll have someone to raise them. And she just like wears her hands and unravels his body until he's he's just dead. Like, oh shit. Then Captain Marvel's like, all right, I got this. And then Captain Carter helps her. Captain Marvel gets knocked out of the way through a wall. And then it says Captain Carter versus the Scarlet Witch. Just be. She's holding her own. Then she does the shield throw. Scarlet Witch catches it. Sends it back so quickly. It chops her in fucking half. Right at the waist. Just boom. Like. <gasps> but what you see is. It coming right at her waist. Then it cuts her, her face. Just. And then. Boom. She falls over. Dead. All you see is the top half fall down on the ground. And then you see the shield land on the ground. Covered in blood. Like. Oh. Again. I don't know how they kept their PG-13 rating. Like. You probably had to do some of these scenes over and over again, like, oh, you kept the shot on the bloody shield three seconds too long. Cut it down to this many seconds, and you'll be PG-13 again. And then Captain Marvel comes back. They fight. Being Captain Marvel, she's pretty powerful. Scarlet Witch is stronger. Kills her. That's what finally, when Charles Xavier rolls in, we don't need to fight like this. Pulls his hand out. And he goes into her mind. Goes through a door. Under some rubble. Is Wanda. She's terrified. He's like, don't worry. In this world, it's your mind. I'll get you out of here. We'll take your body back. He reaches the arm out from the rubble. He reaches down to grab her, pull her out. When a red cloud shows up behind him. The Wanda in the rubble disappears. He stands up. Because he's in a mind thing so he's not in his wheelchair anymore he's just walking he stands up all of a sudden Scarlet Witch's hands reach up grab him by the head and then it cuts to the real world and his wheelchair just stomps over dead it's like she just killed the Illumina fucking naughty the people who killed Thanos in this world like it was nothing she obliterates she just straight up murks him and then it cuts to Chavez and Doctor Strange running away. And she's chasing after him. She's just fucking covered in blood. Again, that's probably a scene with a too much blood, too much blood, too much blood. All right, we'll let them out of blood go. Add a little bit more so we can get away with it. <laughs> yeah, she's chasing after him. Oh, the Doctor Strange of this world locked up the good MacGuffin. Only he can get in. Well, how do we do it? Well, I'll try this spell. Oh, what could be something only connected to me? I know. My watch. Puts a watch in the door. Unlocks. They get to the magic twisty world. There's the good MacGuffin. Yay. We're going to defeat her. He takes it down. All right. Just need the... Then she comes through. Obliterates the book. And it's like... Oh. Shit. Now what? Like, the first three quarters of the film is all about... We get the good MacGuffin. We can defeat her. Because a good MacGuffin gives you any power you need to defeat your enemy. Well, it's destroyed now. Fuck. 
They flee to a different multiverse where you come across an evil... Well, I don't want to say evil Doctor Strange because his entire universe is collapsing. It's about to be destroyed when another Doctor Strange shows up. I was like, oh, hey, how did you get here? Well, if you can get here, I can get out. And they have one of the coolest battles I've ever seen in any of these movies. There's uh, musical pages, and Doctor Strange pulls notes off the pages, throws them at the evil Doctor Strange, he blocks them, and as they like shoot them back and forth at each other, they play different music. It was so cool. This is like, oh, Doctor Strange fires, this music plays. Gets blocked, it gets all jumbled up, and then gets fired back at him, and it's a different song. Like, it was a really cool fight. Now, when he defeats that version of Doctor Strange, it's like, okay, well, the American child has been kidnapped by Wanda. She just obliterated Illuminati. How the hell do we fire her? Especially since I'm stuck here. Wait a minute. The evil MacGuffin allows the dreamwalking that she was doing to go through different bodies of herself. Well, wait a minute. She's in 616 now. When you're from. How oh, you can't just dreamwalk because there's no version of you there. There's no living version of me there. He jumps into his dead body from the other universe that was buried in 616. So now you got a he's like flash missing, decaying version of Doctor Strange. First he has to fight off some undead spirits because you know this is a gross violation of your powers. How dare you? But being Doctor Strange, he gets them under submission. Has them work for him. They go. They fight Scarlet Witch. It's just a hell of a fight. And again, I wonder how many times it took to do like the zombified version of Doctor Strange in this fight and stuff to be like, that's too much. That's rated R. Rated R. And oh, okay, you got it. Sure. All right, we'll make this PG thirteen with a little bride from Disney. <laughs> yeah, it's just this great fight happens. American Chavez, like, you're going to kill me, aren't you? It's the only way. I, I, I know. Just do it. No. You can control your power. Whenever you're afraid for your life, your, your power's activated, right? Yes. Well, what emotion do you feel? Fear. But what else do you fear? You fear for yourself. So look into yourself and, you know, oh, yeah, I can kind of control my powers a little bit. Not really, though. They... And she joins the fight. Scarlet Witch just bombs the floor with her like she does with everyone else. And it's like, I will finally get what I want. I'll finally get my kids. Your kids? American Chavez opens a portal to one of the worlds where her kids are real. And Wanda's like, oh, my babies! She walks through the portal. But they turn around on the couch. They see the Scarlet fucking Witch. They see a monster covered in blood. And they freak out. Mom! Well, then their mom, the Scarlet Witch of that Universe comes down. Oh, you can't, my babies. Fight. She gets mopped. Just absolutely, just, it wasn't even close to a fight. Then Scarlet was just like, all right, well, I win. I get my babies now. But they're freaking out. They're crying. Please don't hurt us. No, no, stop, don't cry. I would never hurt you. I would never hurt my babies. I would never hurt anyone in a sense. But it just seemed like them just terrified out of their minds of her. Looking over her, the other version of herself that she just, again, murked. Wasn't even close. And she freaks out and it's like, no, no, I'm turning to a monster. I'm turning to a monster. Ah. Kind of how I had to go because once you show that the Scarlet Witch is an 11 out of 10 on the power scale, how do you have a threat in the future? In Endgame, she probably could have killed Thanos. Well, in Infinity War, she was holding him off with one hand while he had all but one stone while killing. Vision with the other hand. Like she's extremely powerful. So how do you make a threat in the future where you're going to be like, oh no, there's a threat. Scarlet Witch, mop him. Oh no, it's the big bad. Hey, do to him what you do to literally everyone else. <laughs> so she's like, oh, the temple where we're at with all the evil MacGuffin spells. I'll destroy and bring it down on top of myself. American Chavez, Wong, escape through... A portal while the Doctor Strange undead version and Wanda get the temple crushed down on them 
And it's like, holy shit. Ah. Huh. But now I'll talk about the greatest cameo in any MCU film ever. The 73 Delta 88. Oh, I think, what is that? It's the card that appears in all but one Sam Raimi film. The only film it missed was a Western because he couldn't figure out how to put a car in a Western. <laughs> that is not a joke. The 73 Delta 88. It's what Ash Williams drives in the Evil Dead series. It appears in the Spider-Man movies. It appears in all of his movies. And it's in it. Oh, speaking of Ash Williams, you know who else is in the film? Bruce Campbell. When they're in Universe 838... She's like, oh, hey, you know, one of the first things you need to do is you know nothing. In your world, green means go, red means stop. Well, maybe in this world, red means go, green means stop. And don't forget, you need food. You got to make sure that there's food you can eat. Try pizza. It's usually universal. Oh, he was the guy selling these pizza balls that she swipes. Like, hey, that's mine. You got to pay me. Like, hey, she's just a kid. I don't care she's just a kid. Uh, you're going to pay me up home, Mr. Wizard guy? So he casts a spell in his hand. The hand just beats the crap out of him. As they walk away, so it's like we're off, right? Yeah, sure, we'll wear it off in a bit. A few minutes? Three weeks. <laughs> like, ah, uh, poor Bruce Campbell. And then there's two end credit scenes. One where I'm pretty sure it was Psylocke shows up. And then you get more credits, and then you get Bruce Campbell. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> hey, it stopped. It's finally over! Then the screen cuts to black, end of the movie. Like, that was fantastic. Like, everyone in the theater laughed and clapped at that part because it was hilarious. Best way to do it. <laughs> My opinion, anyways. God, there's so much to do and so much to see, and I don't know anyone else has seen it yet except for Austin. I already talked to him. Because I was leaving the theater, then I saw Austin with his wife. I'm like, hey, Austin, what do you think? Oh, that was so cool. Talked for a few minutes, then I had to get home. <laughs> anyways, I'll let you guys go. Thank you for watching. As always, like, Subscribe, comment down below, and have one hell of a day.